Hello everyone, back with story 7. So you remember in story 6, we talked about how Vidura was explaining to Dhritarashtra to avoid the war. So now we are going to talk about Vidura's return after the war. So let's see. Story 7 is Vidura's return after the war. Vidura left Hastina and went on a pilgrimage to all the holy rivers of Bharatvarsha. He wanted to visit all the Tirthas which had been sanctified by the Lord in his three forms, Brahma, Vishnu and Mahadev. He went to Vrindavan first and spent some time under the shelter of the Govardhana hill. He walked all the way to the river Narmada and bathed in her waters which were always clear. He visited Thampasaras where Sri Rama once stayed while he searched for his Sita. Pushkara was one of the many Tirthas. He went all over the surface of the country dressed in tree barks, with his body covered with dust and with his hair all matted because of negligence and the frequent baths in the several rivers. He was bent on only one thing, the feet of Narayana. And with this thought ever in his mind, he managed to shed the opposites and attain a semblance of peace. Vidura reached Prabhasa, the favorite spot of Krishna. There he heard about the annihilation of the family of Dhritarashtra, like the destruction of a bamboo forest by the fire, which is born of the bamboo itself. He heard that Yudhishthira was now the sole monarch of the entire Bharatvarsha. He tried to grasp the facts. Protected as he was by the armor of detachment, still his heart was touched with great sorrow and quietly he walked towards the banks of Saraswati. From there, he pursued his journey towards the Yamuna. On the banks of the river Yamuna, he met Uddhava. Uddhava sent him to sage Maitreya to learn Brahmavidya. Vidura spent some time in the ashram of Maitreya and from there he traveled towards Hastina. He wanted to meet Yudhishthira and his brothers. He wanted to fall at the feet of his brother Dhritarashtra and console him and Gandhari in their sorrow. This was a mission he had to perform. After that he was free to go to Badrika ashram and shed his frame. That was his intention to perform tapas and to attain freedom from the bondage called life. He had no desire. 35 years had passed since Yudhishthira began to rule the kingdom. He had now learned the art of detachment. The lesson he had learned was the lesson of dedication. His grandfather had taught him again and again that a king belonged to the people and not to himself. He could not afford to have feelings and emotions of his own. His sole concern should be the welfare of his subjects. Yudhishthira had no time to look back on the events of the long ago, which precipitated the terrible war. He realized that blaming himself for the events of the past was wrong and fruitless. Yudhishthira had performed the Ashwamedha, and he had earned peace of mind. He was ruling the earth, which was bounded only by the sea on all sides. He was like Indra ruling the celestial kingdom. The earth was happy under his rule. The land was fruitful. The people were contented. There was rain in plenty, and the cows yielded milk, which was like Amrit. Amrit means nectar. There was no theft and goodness reigned in the hearts of all. Suddenly, Yudhishthira saw evil omens in the sky. He had seen them once before, and that was before Kurukshetra war. The same planets and assumed the same positions relatively, and this spelled calamity, a great calamity to the world. When he was worried as to what the skies profused, Vidura arrived in Hastina. 
Yudhishthira was speechless with amazement and happiness. Tears flowed from his eyes at the sight of his beloved uncle. All the members of the royal family welcomed him. Tritrashtra, Yuyutsu, Sanjaya, Kripa, Kunti, Gandhari, Draupadi, Subhadra, Uttara, Kripa, the wife of Drona, and the brothers of Yudhishthira. The meeting between Vidura and Dhritarashtra was very tender. The old king had been missing Vidura and liked the body welcoming the life breath, which had left it for a while, he embraced his brother. After they had got over the first thrill, they all went into the inner chambers. The guest was made to take food and rest himself. Yudhishthira then asked him how he was. On, and what he had been doing all these years. He said, Did you think of us of all, uncle, during these years? We have not forgotten you and your affection for us. During the days when we were young, you protected us under your wings, like a mother bird her fledglings. We would have been burnt in the house of Lek with our mother long ago if it had not been for you. How have you been all these years? Tell us about the many Tirthas you have visited. My lord, men like you have, men like you who have the form of the Lord ever present in your minds are considered to be Tirthas. When you visit the rivers polluted by ordinary men, you purify the Tirthas. I have been told that Ganga, when she was besieged by Bhagiratha to come down to the earth, Earth said, I am heavenly, and if I come to the earth, the sins of those who bathe in me will contaminate me and rob me of my purity. I do not want that to happen. Bhagiratha said, Pure and holy men will bathe in you. They will be the ones to purify you. They are called Tirtharupas. Tell us about all that has been happening to you all these years. We are eager to hear your words. Vidura related to them what he had been doing. He described the many holy spots he had visited. Time passed very qu quickly and very pleasantly for all of them. Vidura spent some time with them in the palace. Most of it he spent in the company of his unfortunate brother Dhritarashtra. So this was story 7 and it was about the return of Vidura after many many years of the war and next time we are going to see the end of Dhritarashtra. Until then, take care and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.